Yes, the microphone boomstick broke today after like four years of owning it. I have to get another one, but there is a lot. There is a lot to do. There's a lot to talk about regarding the Philadelphia Eagles, and obviously some of the things regarding Nick Sirianni. Is Nick Sirianni losing this locker room? And a lot of other updates um, in it as well. So let's get straight into it. Yo, yeah, what is going on, guys? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. So, more news on the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, obviously, a win against the Giants uh, to a lot of Eagle fans is not the most exciting thing in the world. And there was obviously a lot of um, issues during that game that we could, you know, talk about. And, you know, like I said, like, if you take away uh, the slip Dallas Goddard pick six, if you take away the stupid Zacchaeus run to Boston Scott on kick return, I mean, that's 14 points right there off the board. Can't make these mistakes in the playoffs, but there's a lot more questions regarding obviously the stuff that that you know was on the sideline, and really Nick Sirianni is like the main focal point here. I mean, we were promised a fundamentally sound you know unit of a team, and seems like mistakes are being made. I just feel like I feel like Nick's not even doing this half the time, and I feel like there's a control sequence here where Nick is. Nick is acting like everything is fine. It's like your house is on fire. You're going to, I mean, your house is on fire and you're sitting right in the middle of it and you're saying that everything is good. You know what I mean? Um, I, I mean, I'm already fighting with Eagle fans this week on just like they can't fix it and, you know, whether they can fix it, can't fix it. This is, you know, doing this to your offense or the defense is not going to fix anything. You know, I understand like the only thing I can understand about this roster right now is it definitely needs to get younger. Um, at certain positions and there's a lot a lot of promise for the future right now I mean you got two games left against Arizona and the Giants and I don't know because hearing news that you know not only you know why have the Eagles looked the same in the first half of every single football game this year besides you know hitting the uh you know with the with the 49ers the Dallas Cowboys and obviously going to Seattle you know why did we look so different in those first halves I swear to God it was almost like we were doing the same thing every game. And the coaches were like, you know what? If we're winning this way, why not? But, you know, when you're barely beating teams, and I hate that word because that's what we were doing. Um, we were having these second-half comebacks, which are great, but that's not – you can't win championships that way. I didn't know how long that was going to hold up, and obviously it didn't – it held up for a good amount of time. And then – fans start to go back and say well they shouldn't have they should have lost the the two Washington games they should have lost the, the you know they, they should have lost all these other games they should have lost the Kansas City game you know because there's drops and there's you know pe you know there are teams that made a lot of mistakes on us um the Eagles just never made adjustments and whether it's an analytical thing o offensively and if you think that this team is not in panic mode by the way they made Sean uh, sorry P Matt Patricia defensive coordinator or at least calling the plays like why would they even make that switch if they weren't panicking at that point you know something was going on you know you know I think Sirianni made the switch to Matt Patricia I think it was on like a Tuesday or a Wednesday okay there was some panic there I think we can all agree on that there might be some fans that don't agree on it but you're not running the football enough and Hertz is regressing because I, I mean, I think they're trying to treat this like it's last year. I mean, Nick Sirianni is going to the podium and telling us that this is the same offense that they've been running the last two years, counting this year as the third year. Okay? It's not true. This is 2021 all over again with a better roster. <laughs> I mean, that's that's how I kind of think of it. It's 21 with a better roster. And I feel like... You know, you're not getting the – all of these positions are flawed right now, especially on the defense because there's just not enough going on. When you have less talent on defense, you have to be more creative. When you have less money for a horror film, when you have $100,000 to make a film, you know, you don't, have, you don't have a lot of money to use CGI. You don't have a lot of money uh, to take a lot of – you know, you got to take shortcuts, but you have to be creative with less money to make a movie you know, that you want it to be a big film later on. And when you have too much of something, sometimes you take advantage of it. You take shortcuts. You go to CGI. You don't make the hair look realistic. You don't make the prosthetics look more like prosthetics. 
You know, shit like that is a huge example of, you know, why the Eagles shouldn't <laughs> have great things on the roster. Why? I mean, you've got, I mean, it's, it's just crazy right now. I mean, even during the Giants game and all the stuff was going on the sideline, um, you know, just the, just these little arguments. And I don't really take this too much into account because when it's player on player, I don't really make a big deal about it. But when it comes to like, you know, Reddick was told by Nick to, you know, get back on the field, you know, and then like, you know, I know that Devontae Smith and, you know, Sirianni had a little thing going on. AJ Brown looked like he didn't want to be around what was going on. I mean, I don't know what happened there, but I know that Devontae Smith, even hearing his press conference, that he was just like, man, we need to get this shit together. We're not playing good. I don't care if I have a thousand yards. This shit needs to stop. It needs to stop. And when you see it one time, it's fine. But when you see it like multiple times in a game, a couple times, it's kind of worrisome of like, what the hell is going on? And all the players' faces. Okay. We've seen like Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni after like a bad series last year, like he'll like yell in his ear and Hurts will be like, okay, you know, and like know that Nick is pissed, like trying to, trying to be a coach. That's what he's supposed to do. You know, I think it was fighting with the defensive line coach, or sorry, the linebacker coach, whatever it was. Then Devontae Smith got involved, and A.J. Brown looked like he didn't want to be there. So there was just a lot of shit going on. Um, I don't know what was said. Um, you know, the Hassan Reddick, I think he just told him to get his ass back on the field or something. I think that was the, the lip sync that people were reading from Nick to Hassan Reddick. But when it came down to Devontae Smith and what was going on there, it was just, I, I it's, I, this is what happens like when you like you're I mean you're not playing up to the standard I mean this is had this has been the standard all year I mean the Giants game was a much better game that we've watched I mean it was 20 to what 20 to 3 I mean they were I mean I mean look it's the it's the New York Giants so it's a lot of people are going to say that why does this win matter so much you're not facing another good team this year you have to wait until the playoffs to actually you know have a, you know have a chance at a, a better team and um, this coaching staff is going to have like, they got to look perfect. They got to look mistake free. And I'm telling you, like you give up two touchdowns on, uh, I know a slip is a slip, but you know, things like this happen on turf sometimes, um, or whatever. I mean, we're playing at the link, so it really wasn't a big deal, but you know, some guys slip on grass. It just happens. And you know, but the play before that hurts almost drew a pick right there, you know, so you don't have a sustained run game. I mean, it's just insane, man. It's just, it's, it's literally, you're setting everybody up to fail at this point, And there's only so much you could do, uh, going forward. Um, you know, getting, um, obviously, you know, uh, hurts uh, and, and, you know, how he treats the offense. And I feel like the more you put the ball into Jalen hurts his hands, I feel like the worse it's going to get. And I think that's with every quarterback. I'm not singling him out or anything. Uh, you got to have a sustained run game. DeAndre Swift, man, I mean, he's 12 yards away from 1,000. People are like, oh, he ran enough this year. I'm like, dude, do you know how many yards DeAndre Swift would have? He'd be top two right now. He wouldn't be the fifth the fifth best running back. He'd be a top two running back right now. If they, I'm not saying like early. I mean, yeah, they, I mean, give him more snaps in the first half, but holy shit, that guy can carry 18 to 25 carries a game. What has he got, 216 carries for the year? I mean, it's just fucking insane you have a 24 year old running back that could literally cut on a dime at 100 percent speed can make guys miss in open space good in red zone i mean and you use and game will had a good game against the giants but when he's used for certain specific plays i just don't like it i totally noticed too that they took deandre swift out of the passing game a little bit they want him to more focus on the ground but you know I mean, people are telling me that, oh, they're not running DeAndre Swift because they want to they want to run Gainwell more because they want to resign DeAndre Swift and want him to have less stats and, you know, be more affordable next year. I mean, we'll see. I mean, I, I can't even believe that. That's just really stupid to me. Like, if you want to win a Super Bowl and you want to win these games, fantastic. You have to use every bit of the disposal. I'm not using this player because I don't want to. I don't want to use him too much, you know, between the you know the next five games because you know I don't want to. I want to keep the price down on DeAndre Swift. It makes it makes absolutely no sense because realistically, after this year, with your running backs, you only have Kenneth Gainwell. That's it, and he's got one more year left. He's got next year, and that's it. And then you're down to no running backs. Boston Scott will probably come back on a one year deal like he always does every year. 
But and they barely even use him at this point. You sign Rashad Penny, you don't even use him. After that bye week, they didn't use him for like two games. I already knew they weren't going to use him the rest of the year. I mean, I don't even know why he's here. I don't know why Julio Jones is even here in this offense. You know what I mean? So because it's real, the opportunity is just not there for these guys. You have a big back in a Rashad Penny that you can use for red zone, and you can use Swift in the open field. You know, between you know between the forties, between the thirties, or something like you can do whatever you want. Really, I mean, you can really do whatever you want. Like, if I had all these players to dispense on the field myself, man, the create just the creativity would be so great. You know, I'm not no coach, but, man, if I had Rashad Penny, and, I mean, and Gainwell's not bad either. Even in the receiving game, he's not bad. Like, he had a good game against the Giants, but for specific plays, like, Swift literally runs from the right side, clogged up, goes to the left side, makes guys miss, either gets the first down or gets positive yards out of it. Kenneth Gainwell is not going to stop on a dime like that. It's just not going to happen. Um, you know, there was a few lengthy converse, uh, conversations from Jalen Hurst to the rest of the team. I don't know what players kind of, you know, kind of said, hey, like, I, I don't even know if, like, these players are talking to the coaches. Like, we know the players give a shit. It's the coaches that were questioning every single day. It's the coaches. It's not the, it's not the players. Because what happens is, the Eagles lose a game, they're down, their morale sucks, and then throughout the week, they're excited, they're ready to go, they're ready to go get this, and then bad play calling. I'm not saying the Giants' play calling was bad, there was just certain things where it's like, Sirianni, seriously, like, why are you doing this? Like, this, I mean, having another chance to put a team away, and they still didn't do it, and that's been one of the biggest problems for the Philadelphia Eagles this year, and it's just a continued thing. Um, you know, for the, the, you know, I, it's look, I, I harp on Deandre Swift because I, I was so, he was my favorite player that we got on the team. I liked him more than Jalen Carr, as much as these were great guys that we drafted. I, Deandre Swift was like my most like favorite player of this year. And they barely have done a fucking thing with him. Yes. He has over a thousand. He'll have over a thousand yards next week against Arizona, most likely, but God, they're missing so much more opportunity, and I really hope. And you know what? I, I've been saying that every week. I hope, I hope, I hope. And my wish is not coming true at this point when it comes to the Eagles' run game with the more DeAndre Swift. I mean, he had five. He had 15 yards on five carries in the first half. I mean, why do they keep doing this? And don't tell me because they're going to run him in the second half because there's games where they don't even run him in the second half at this point. They don't do that. You know what I mean? So... It's just, it's really annoying to me. Like, it's just, I mean, they've tried some, I mean, once in a blue moon, you'll see a pistol set. You'll see like some, you know, both running backs on the field on left and right side of Jalen Hurts at the same time. You'll see like some different things they pull out of the back pocket once in a while, but it's just not enough. They started using more motion, but it was regular motion. It wasn't nothing that Miami does or, you know, they have no quick passes. Everything just takes forever to develop. And, you know, what I really liked about the Giants game, and I know I keep going back to it with DeAndre Swift, is when they literally, like, they were aggressive. The, run, the, the offensive line was just fucking destroying, being physical. They were like, dude, we're going to run DeAndre Swift down your fucking throat. And that's what they did. I mean, they just gave them, it wasn't RPO or nothing. It was just like, they just gave it to Swift. Just let him have a good, just let him have a good time. That's what you got to do. And if it gets clogged up after three, four good runs from Swift and he gets clogged up for a two, three yard loss, who gives a shit? Do it again. Do it again with another player. I don't even care. You know, you pass three times first down. You get a third and 20, which was a huge one to A.J. Brown because we were moved back. And then, you know, then you start running with DeAndre Swift again. Like, the offense has to go through Swift. And I'm going to say this over and over again. There's Eagle fans who's like, eh. It's like, nah. It's like, I don't care who you piss off. I don't care what receivers get pissed off. Your offense, and by the way, Alameda Zacchaeus need, needs to stay in this offense, you know, because he is a hell of a blocker. We saw it in two games and what he did down the field for Devontae Smith, and especially that Washington game with, with A.J. Brown, that big touchdown uh, from the left sideline catch for a big touchdown open space was great, so definitely keep him around. But, and I don't even care about using Swift in the passing game that much. I don't even care about that. And yeah, trust me, like I love guys like James Cook that could do all that shit. And I know we have a running back that could do it. The Eagles just don't like to do it. They like Kenneth Gainwell doing that more than Swift. And that's fine. It is what it is. I'll take more snaps from, from, from DeAndre Swift. There's no doubt about it. You know what I mean? So 
Um, you know, I, 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 I want to see more of an unleash. I mean, I feel like the run has to open up the pass. I think it has to go like that. Not the pass, open the run. Because the more passing, the worse it's going to get. Going to get. It's a regressing year. It's a regressive year from Jalen Hurts. I get it. This is not what he is, you know, the rest of his career. This just happens, you know. Patrick Mahomes not having a fantastic year. Josh Allen's had up and down. down. Sam Howell, it was up and down this year. You know, Sam Howell, you know, first-year quarterback, you know, not too bad. I think there is something there with him. But this this shit just happens sometimes. It, it's just the coaches aren't helping Jalen Hurts. How You know what I mean? Like, you're forcing him to throw the ball all the time, and then his decision-making is getting worse and worse because we're passing so much. No dump-off, no progression. I mean, nothing. I mean, it, it's just – your first read and stop throwing. And, and the good thing what they didn't do in this game, which I actually had to respect, is that they didn't throw the kill shot downfield at for, on first down. You know, get time of possession. Run the football. Throw some short shit. Use the middle of the field. They actually ran some slants. Holy shit. Like, the offense is starting to figure it out. Week 16 at this point. You know, it's just it's just insane. It's just absolutely nuts. You know, even after the game, like, you know, A.J. Brown was just one of those guys was like, I, I'm not talking to the media. I mean, I don't know what it was, but he's like, you're not going to like what I got to say. And I, it wouldn't it wouldn't doubt me it had something to do with the coaching. It, it wouldn't doubt me at all that that's what it had to do with. And, you know, A.J. Brown's going to do his thing. You know, Devontae Smith is the more passive type guy, but if someone says something to him, he'll say something back. But mostly he's quiet. And he's probably the most professional guy on the team. And I don't care about that. Like, you know, there's receivers that just open their mouth and they want to, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. A.J. Brown's more of a vocal guy and shows with his body. And, you know, that's just who he is as a player. So, you know, I wonder what was said behind the scenes. I mean, was there a players coach meeting? I mean, seriously, there, there had to have been something at this point. I mean, it's the players just can't meet up and be like, dude, like these coaches need to fix things. Like they got to talk to the coaches. I mean, that's, uh, how it really goes. Um, I think another thing that's going to be, I mean, I, I think another thing that happened that, which I really did like, um, you know, I think, you know, uh, Shaq Leonard is another guy, Darius Leonard, whatever the guy, I call him Shaq Leonard's his middle name, Darius, his first name, whatever. Um, you know, he's another guy. Like I thought he had, and I know it's against the giants. I know, but I thought Shaq Leonard really, we, we kind of felt his presence a little bit in this game. He had what? Six, seven tackles in a sack. He hasn't had a sack since 2020. And the less Nicholas Morrow we have to see on the field, the better it's going to be. So to get Zach Cunningham back this week, which I think is going to be a, a really good, um, you know, get some, getting some guys back, which is uh, fantastic with Zach Cunningham. I mean, that's, that's great. And getting Avante Maddox back, back into the secondary. I, I understand the defense is still what it is, but to get your original nickel cornerback, like welcome back Avante Maddox. And, you know, obviously I don't think he's going to stay here after this year, but, you know, we'll see what happens. But Zach Cunningham back is definitely well missed. Been hurt way too much this year. And, and really, he's, he's had a little bit of an injury problem, but it, nothing crazy. But we've had to dip into free agency for for linebackers, what, three, four times this year? I mean, just about. But Shaq Leonard, though, like, I think, you know, I, I don't know if there's anything there. I mean, I, you know, he said in the press conference after the game, like, you know, they wrote me off. You know, they thought I didn't have it anymore. You know, this is a guy that had two back surgeries. He had a, he had a neck surgery. I mean, you know, to going through two back surgeries is not easy to come back from, especially, um, you know, yeah, was he, 28 years old, you know, relatively in his prime and could have a couple years with the Eagles maybe. Maybe Shaq Leonard will re-sign with the Eagles after this year. Because if I see more explosive plays from Shaq Leonard, damn. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, I can't really complain about that at all. I think that would be an awesome thing to sign him back and, you know, it, it, it helps you. Nicobe Dean is still out. <laughs> like, when is he coming back? Seriously. I mean, he was on, uh, he's, he was, he's been hurt three times this year. He was out in the offseason, missed all the joint practices. He missed all the um, important work in preseason. And then he's on IR two times. And he's still out. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's insane, dude. And, you know, maybe there's something with Kobe Dean, but the guy just can't. I mean, three, three, three times injured in one year. It's not good. So they might have to rely on a savvy vet and re-sign Shaq Leonard or something like that. Because if I see Shaq Leonard make some good plays, I'm, I'm going to be happy. Zach Cunningham, I think, is a big re-sign candidate next year. So we'll see what happens with him. Um, but Avante Max is definitely a big one. And trust me, like, we're waiting for Darius Slay to come back. 
And then Keely Ringo takes over for James Bradbury. And if they want to do things with James Bradbury in the nickel and want to kind of experiment, experiment with him, which it really didn't work early this season when, when Maddox was hurt, you know, then they could do that because, you know, we didn't have certain other players at the time early this season. Um, you know, I think there's some, there's some promising things. Isaiah, Isaiah Rogers coming to the Eagles. I think that's going to be a big thing for next year. So, I mean, there's, there's some promising things going forward in the secondary with young talent. We just got to see more of it and guys getting opportunities. I think Eli Ricks and Keely Ringo, I think both of them did a pretty good job yesterday. I think Keely Ringo didn't even allow another pass. James Bradbury was the ultimate guy. He was the number one guy pretty damn much. He gave up like five passes for like 30 something yards. This isn't horrible, but he gave, I mean, he can't cover. I mean, he's, he's just trailing behind and the money he's making. It's just, yeah, it's not, it's not doing well. So some reinforcements, not only for the season, but for the playoffs, they're being very careful with Avante Max. I know he could have probably played this week because he had a few good practices with full pads on, um, but they decided to kind of keep him back a little bit and let him do his thing. So I understand that 100 percent. Um, you know, the defensive line is, is, is another issue that we've kind of been looking, you know, Jalen Carter only had like Jalen Carter only had like 21 snaps in this game. Now it wasn't because of the field goal substitution. He got the penalty on versus the giants. I don't, I don't think it was that, but 33% of the snaps, dude, Jalen Carter's got to play more at the, I mean, it's just. Why, why 33%? Why 21 snaps? I, I don't get it. I, I'm afraid to look at some of the other guys that were in the game. Um, but people were bitching at me yesterday in the comment section because they were like, well, you know, even if they do blitz or they run stunts, like, it's not going to matter. Like, it's not going to matter. It's going to matter more than you think, okay? I'm not saying they have to blitz on every play, but they have to do it more than once a game. Okay, newsflash, they don't blitz more than once once a game or less than that, okay? I thought the Miami game was the best game. They played defense in a lot of different areas because that was a track star offense you really had to defend. And I really liked the way they defended that offense that week, and they were pretty damn aggressive that game. Um, when it comes to this defensive line, when you just line everybody up and just rush, I mean, you sacked fucking Tommy DeVito one time. I'm tired of getting one sack a game on these fucking quarterbacks. I mean, Tommy DeVito rolls to his right, escapes the pocket because these defensive ends are crashing down. There's no containment on the outside. You let him go to the outside, and he, he doesn't do much of anything. And Tyrod Taylor did more damage because the guy has more experience, and we can't play the, the scramble game of quarterbacks. We're horrible at it. We're terrible at it. I... I Still, I don't. We, I'd say, are we not athletic enough? I mean, I don't. It's Tyrod Taylor we're talking about here. Every quarterback that's has that's mobile. I can't even imagine what Lamar Jackson would do to us. I if, if we let if we met Lamar Jackson in the Super Bowl, I, I don't even know what he would do to us. And and that's <laughs> and that's really concerning uh, down the line. But you know, it's it's very inconsistent. Like I said, like. When you you playing your linebackers downhill and you know not messing up the the safety coverage of the seventy yard touchdown, which was which was horrible over Reed Blankenship, but defensive line wise, there's no excuse for this shit. There's none at all. I mean, the, when they run a stunt, they're getting pressure or they're getting sacks. I mean, it's there. It's there every time they do it. Running stunts, they just don't do it enough. And the defense, I would say, played pretty good. Um, even like, I mean, it was really just two drives. I mean, other than that, the offense gave up points at the end of the day. So it wasn't on the defense, um, you know, but there's still things that need to be figured out and fixed, there's, you know, and Matt Patricia, he, he's not, I mean, he's just, he's just running the size playbook at this point. I mean, Nick calls it the size playbook, but really it's Nick's playbook because he's the one that kept this entire scheme going into the 2023 season of this year. Okay. That's. That's the truth. So, I mean, Matt Patricia, like, I don't think he's done that bad the last couple weeks, to be honest with you. I just need a little bit more. I just, I don't think they're doing enough at the defensive line. I don't think they're blitzing enough. I mean, their tackling was a little bit better against the Giants. I mean, it was a little bit better. I thought it was okay because um, the tackling has gotten to get better. I mean, if you're going to leave everything underneath wide open, but I've liked what I've seen from some, some young guys coming right in. 
I think Bradbury is going to be a big liability going to the playoffs if they keep him at the number two corner spot. And I think Keely Ringo's got to take his spot and bench his ass. I think that's what's got to happen. Um, it's unfortunate because before Bradbury signed that big extension, if Chauncey Garner Johnson signed his extension with the Eagles, the Eagles would, would have not signed Bradbury. Bradbury was the big surprise sign because Chauncey didn't sign with the Eagles and it had an open spot for some, for some money. And they gave it to James Bradbury, which wasn't bad. Didn't think it was a bad move. I think the scheme is hurting the players, no doubt. I think a lot of these positions are flawed because they just look very, it looks very basic. They're not creative with stunts or blitzes or, you know, a corner blitz or a safety blitz. I mean, I, I don't see it that much. I really don't. And you know what? They might be giving up a bigger play now than they did, but I would rather them be a little bit more aggressive and give up a big play. Um, you know what I mean? So I get it. You know, so, oh, Sean Desai doesn't give up big plays. I get it, but dude, we have to take shots. We have to take chances. Regardless if you give up a big play or you give up something underneath that's big chunk yards, what's the difference? Yes, you get, obviously, if you get beat over the top, it's points. I get it. But if players are running, if offenses are running the same plays nonstop, slant pass after slant pass, and you're playing off ball like that, it's a disaster waiting to happen. We've seen it this year. You know what I mean? We've seen it. You know, Hassan Reddick's got, like, what, 11 and a half sacks? This year, I mean, I mean, this defensive, this defensive line should be doing a lot more, and it's not because you know you're giving the offensive line like no other looks. You're just basically lining them up and just letting them play. That's it. It's all. It's all you're really doing. So hopefully, some some more steps, you know, down the line. Um. Now I want to go talk about probably the last thing I want to talk about. Um. Is the record for the Philadelphia Eagles the number one seed? What's going on? So Eagles are eleven and four. The Cowboys are ten and five. The Commanders are five and ten. The Giants are four and eleven. So obviously, take the Commanders out, not making the playoffs. Take the Giants out, definitely not making the playoffs. Okay. Now the Cowboys losses to the Bills and the Miami Dolphins definitely help the Eagles one hundred percent. Now Detroit is still sitting. Okay. Um, and the same record as the Eagles. And unfortunately right now, like if Detroit wins out, wins against the Cowboys and wins their last game and the Eagles win out, the Eagles will lose the second seed and they will have the fifth seed. Okay. The 49ers lost last night, but because they beat the Philadelphia Eagles and because the Eagles lost to Seattle, that Seattle game is going to fuck us over now for that first seed. Unless the 49ers lose one of two games against the Rams or Washington for the Eagles to slide into that spot. Obviously, the Eagles have to win out, too. But I know that 49ers are dealing with injuries. I know Brock's got a stinger. I know there's a few injuries to the offensive line. I know they've got two, two left tackles that are hurt right now. So I know that game against Baltimore, they definitely suffered a little bit. And I thought that was going to be their hardest game of the year. I was hoping that they were going to put up a fight. And, man, did they put up a beating more than a fight on San Francisco. Um, you know, so I'm not really focused on number one seed. I don't see, unless because the last time Brock had injuries or Brock is injured, and they're not saying a damn word about it. I know the head coach was like, oh, he's going to be fine, you know. But who knows? Because if Brock's not playing or if Brock is playing with injuries around him, you know, last time that happened, they lost three games straight. You know what I mean? You lose your left tackle. I mean, it's going to be insane. Um, the blueprint on the 49ers is here. So, if the Eagles need to stay in the second seed to play the worst seed, the Cowboys would have to beat the Lions. And the last thing that I want to ever do, now the Eagles still have to win out. It doesn't matter if the, the Lions lose one and the Eagles win the two games left. We will get second seed. And like I said, the Cowboys are playing Detroit this week. And yeah, that's what it's going to come down to. Um, that's definitely what it's going to, it's going to come down to that. So I think first seed is out of question unless these injuries are a concern to where the Rams have a legit shot to beat them. I don't think Washington does. And I doubt it, but I think. The Rams definitely do. I think more of a percentage of can win this. Um, you know, so that's really how it goes. I don't I don't want to I, I don't want Dallas to win Jack nothing, but it's probably gonna come down to that. I, I don't think and I think Detroit, you know, I think there's a good chance Detroit beats Dallas, but you know, maybe Dallas has like 
a comeback type win. Uh, so it helps the Eagles a lot. And if they get the second seed, most likely, and this is a big if, they might have another chance at Seattle. And you'll have a home game. You'll, at the second seed, you'll have a home game against Seattle. Get a nice rematch against Seattle, which I'm fine with. I, I would actually, I think the second seed would be perfect for them. Perfect for them. Um, you know, with the situation that we have right now. So that's all I really got to say, guys. I kind of want to go over that really quick. Um, you know, and that's it. So definitely a lot to talk about, discuss this week. I know it's a long video. There's just a lot. I was just ranting and raving for a while um, just over this whole entire thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, we'll keep you updated on the Philadelphia Eagles and everything going on this week. You guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Shake Squad up. Bottles five. Peace out, guys. Peace.